I'm Don Kelly. And I'm Renee Kelly, and we're Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission Fishing Skills Instructors. And the owners of Tackle Shack here in Wellsboro, PA. I started fishing when I was just a kid in local ponds catching all sorts of panfish, bass, catfish with my little Mickey Mouse fishing rod. The things I like most about fishing is getting outside, going to different lakes, and getting to see all the eagles here in Tioga County. Now, I've been fishing my whole life. Uh, I grew up in the southeast part of Pennsylvania fishing uh, Marsh Creek Lake and many of the other local reservoirs and streams. And you know, some of my earliest memories were catching bluegills and bass on some of the local lakes with my brothers and my dad. And it's just a lot of fun. You know, since then we've spent our whole lives just chasing these fish on bodies of water all across Pennsylvania. Today we're here at Hamilton Lake in Wellsboro, Pennsylvania, and we're going to show you a few tricks on how to catch bass here or any other lake. Hamilton Lake is a 42 acre impoundment uh, located just outside the borough here in Wellsboro. It is a uh, warm water fishery. There's largemouth bass, bluegills, pickerel, uh, crappies, and catfish that you can also catch here. Just a really fun lake. It, it is also stocked in the spring and it's one of the top ice fishing destinations in our local area as well. Bass are a popular game fish all across Pennsylvania and especially here in Tioga County where we have uh, seven local lakes and a variety of rivers and streams that you can find them in as well. Largemouth bass in particular are what we're going to be fishing for here at Hamilton, but you'll find smallmouth in many of the local lakes here as well. You know, think of bass fishing, you might think of uh, the big tournaments and uh, these fancy bass boats and all the big names in fishing, but a lot of the bass fishing starts right here. It starts on the bank of your local lake or your local stream, and uh, you know, hopefully someday you're out there competing on the tournament trail, or maybe you're just more interested in having some fun with your family. You know, either way, these tips and tricks are going to help you get started in the world of bass fishing. So before we get out fishing, we want to take a few minutes and talk about some of the gear. You know, if you walk into my shop, another tackle shop, or you know, any of these big box stores, it can be overwhelming seeing all the tackle for bass fishing. There's just so many different lures and so many different gadgets out there to help you catch bass. And while they're all fun to use and you know down the road maybe you're going to want to pick some of them up there's just a few basic things you're going to need to get started fishing whether it's the local lake here or any lake here in pennsylvania the first thing you're going to need to get started bass fishing is a pennsylvania fishing license you can purchase one of these at a fishing retailer or at fishandboat.com a few other things you're going to want to remember is plenty of water sunscreen sunglasses and protective clothing to help keep you from getting sunburned the next thing you're going to need of course is a fishing rod you know, when you walk into a tackle shop, there are hundreds of different options, or if you're browsing online, there are just tons and tons of brands and tons of price points, and it can be overwhelming. But what you're really looking for is something that meets your budget and you know, it's going to work for bass fishing here. What I like to use is something six foot to seven foot, uh, medium action, that's going to cover you know good majority of the fishing you're going to do. And uh, as you get more involved, you can buy more rods and, and different actions and different styles. So what I like just starting out and something that's going to work for a variety of fish and a variety of techniques is a medium action spinning rod. Something between six foot six, uh, seven foot, they're going to be good size for you and it'll work great for fishing from shore. Uh, this is a St. Croix here with a Shimano reel. There's a lot of different options out there for, for brands and uh, definitely going to be able to find one that meets your price point. Uh, something as low as $20 here and uh, again just looking for a, a nice medium action rod. You know, somewhat stiff, not, not real soft here. The ultralights and things are going to be better for trout and panfish. The medium is going to work much better for bass, and it'll also work if you want to catch some catfish and things too. What you might also see in the tackle stores are rods that look like this. This is called a bait caster. Uh, just starting out, these can be a little bit more cumbersome, uh, not quite as user friendly, but a nice tool to have once you get a little bit more experienced. One thing you might want to look into too when you buy your rods is a rod sock like these. It just helps keep your rods from getting tangled and protects them a little bit. Uh, rods are an investment and the longer you can protect them, the longer they're going to last you. So once you have your rod and reel picked out, the next thing you're going to need is line. Uh, some combos you can buy, they already have line on them, but a lot of them don't and you'll need to buy that separately. Uh, for bass fishing, I generally like a clear line. Um, monofilament is going to be your most versatile. It's a not available in all kinds of sizes and a bunch of different colors. Personally, I really like the clear. You'll have to experiment with some of the other colors and see what you like, uh, such as something like low vis green or high vis yellow. You know, a lot of options out there. But look for something that's eight, 10 pound test. That'll cover you for most of your fishing for bass in the local lakes. So now that you have all that, the next thing you want to think about is a few baits that you can use to catch bass in any of your local lakes. And when you're picking out baits, what you want to think about is what the bass are eating. Now bass are a predatory fish, meaning most of what they're eating is either smaller fish or crayfish and lizards and different worms and things. So when we're picking baits, we want to pick baits that's going to match that natural forage that they're eating every day. 
there's a variety of baits, including you know soft plastics and hard baits, and uh, it's good to have a nice selection of everything, you know, so you can try different techniques. And we're just going to walk you through a couple of the basics that you can pick up, and uh, that'll work for pretty much bass anywhere in Pennsylvania. So first, let's talk about some of the hard baits that you can buy that uh, you can catch bass with. You know, a few of them are baits like these are called spinner baits. Uh, the way this works, you throw it out and reel it in. And these are mimicking a small bluegill or a, a small shad or shiner swimming through the water. Uh, these are great and real easy to use. You just throw them out and reel them in. And they'll work really well for catching bass, uh, as well as pickerel and some other fish, too. Uh, along those same lines are some uh, other minnow imitations. Uh, these are called crankbaits. They're going to have a bill on the front of them. They dive to different depths. Yeah, this one's a pretty deep diver. It'll dive to about 15 feet. When you're fishing from shore here, you want to be conscious of how deep you're going to be fishing. You know, this particular area we're at today, it's only about 5, 10 feet deep. So we really don't want something to dive this deep, but it is available for other areas. Then there's baits like this, a little longer slender profile. This is called a jerk bait, or some people call them stick baits. And this is going to mimic a injured minnow. And uh, again, kind of a really good bait for fishing these shallower waters too. And finally, this is a uh, different colored crankbait. Uh, again, these are going to be available in a whole bunch of different colors. The first ones we showed you were kind of some minnow patterns. And uh, when I'm picking my colors, what I like to have is some natural stuff. Uh, this particular one is a crawfish, and I like to fish these in like rocky areas where the, the crayfish are going to be hanging out. And then I also do like to have some bright colored ones like these. Um, if you have dirty water, stained water, and these are just going to show up a little bit better for them too. So these baits are all divers. Uh, later we're going to be fishing with some baits that stay on the surface and they can be a lot of fun too because they're pretty easy to fish. You throw them out and reel them in and bass will come up and eat them right off of the surface. So those are some of the hard baits and the minnow imitations and the crayfish imitations. But uh, a lot of what you'll see guys fishing with too are, are called soft plastics or rubber worms as uh, many people call them too. And they come in all kinds of shapes and colors and you know, with crazy appendages and some of them are just, you know, long straight worms and really all kinds of neat colors and styles out there. Some of the most basic ones that we fish with are going to be, you know, worms like these. This is a traditional worm. These came out years and years ago. And, uh, you know, since then the, the technology's changed, but the basic idea is still the same. You're going to throw this out there and the bass is going to grab it like it's a worm crawling on the bottom or, you know, a dying minnow or something sinking to the bottom and just a, a really effective bait. So like I mentioned earlier, these things are available in all kinds of different colors and uh, you know it can be a little bit overwhelming, but uh, you can really narrow your color selection down to just a, a few basics. One of the things I like to think about is uh, the water clarity in particular. You know, if we're fishing real clear water like we're going to be today, the uh, light greens or this color is called green pumpkin tends to be a, a good imitation. You know, think about your, uh, your baby bluegills or a crayfish you see crawling around. They're generally going to be that greenish uh, kind of tannish color and uh, the green pumpkin or, or watermelon colors mimic that very well. Now, if you get into some dirtier water, you know, black and blue or black and red tends to be a really good color and the reason being the dirty water like is a dark brown color and the black profile of this is actually going to be darker than the water so the fish can pick this up a lot easier. It's also the same reason we're going to use these darker baits on you know, overcast days or late in the day. It's just easy for them to see when there's low visibility. So one thing you'll notice with uh, a lot of these plastics is uh, they're just plastics. There's no hook or anything attached to them and uh, you're going to need to pick one of those up separately. And with that there's you know, all kinds of different options. Some of the most easiest ones to use are jig heads like these where the, the weight is already attached to the hook. Um, you can just thread these on there and it helps keep your bait down near the bottom. And then there's other ones big hooks like these. This is called an extra wide gap worm hook. Uh, this is what we would use for a rig called a Texas rig, which we're going to show you here in a little bit. Uh, it's a weedless way to, to rig some of your worms. And then there's you know, these round hooks, which are kind of more what you're used to seeing. Um, you can use this style hook for your live baits or you know, many of these plastics too. And then finally, we have jig heads like these that are going to have little blades on them. And uh, what that's going to do is just give it a little bit more flash and a little bit more action to, to some of your plastics. So now you've got your lures and your rods and all that picked out, uh, a few of the last things you're going to need are just some basic tools to make your life a little easier. A pair of clippers like these, these are great for just clipping the line. So I also like to have a pair of scissors too, and again this is just for cutting line, particularly braided lines. The scissors work really well for that. And finally, we're going to need a uh, pair of pliers or hemostats, and we're going to use these for a few things. Uh, one, getting the hook out of the fish, and two, 
Uh, you can use these to debarb some of your baits too. Um, you know, if you want to practice catch and release, it's always a good good idea to pinch down some of your barbs. And the way we can do that is just take your pliers, take the barb on the hook here, and just pinch it down. And what that's going to do is just going to flatten that little barb, so it'll come out of the fish a little easier, so you don't harm them. So that's uh, the basics for gear. Uh, now let's uh, talk a little bit about rigging and uh, how you're going to use these tools to catch a few fish. So here we have a uh, little worm rigged up on a jig head like we had talked about earlier. Uh, what I'm going to do is cut this off and uh, show you how to use a Texas rig. Uh, this jig head's a great way to fish, but uh, the Texas rig is probably one of the most popular ways to rig a plastic worm and really simple to do. So when you're picking a hook out, you want to make sure you've got one that's uh, big enough to fit the bait you're using. Uh, this is a 2 aught here, and this is about a 4-inch worm. You know, it looks like a pretty big hook to a lot of people, but you know, bass has a big mouth. You want to have a nice big hook that's uh, going to hook them and don't have to worry about pulling out when you're reeling them in. And how we're going to rig this is starting with a Palomar knot. And you can use an improved clinch knot too, but I find the Palomar knot is a much stronger knot for this. And what we're going to do is you know, double our line over, run it through the eye of the hook. It's on there. And we're going to make a loop. Bring that around. And then take this loop and go all the way around the hook. Uh, this is a particularly useful knot if you're tying with braid at all. Um, this will not slip at all. And when your knot looks kind of like that, one of the most important things you have to do is wet it a little. And then just pull both ends tight. Make sure you're not sitting on top of the hook and pull it tight. Very, very strong knot. And we're just going to clip this tag end off. Again, using just our line cutters here. So now we have our hook here. Uh, next thing we're going to do is take our plastic worm. Uh, this is a, uh, what we're going to tie is a a weightless rig. You can also add a bullet weight or some sort of weight up above here if you want. These particular worms are, are quite heavy and uh, we're fishing pretty shallow water so we're actually going to fish these weightless. And what we're going to do is take our worm, just slide it the, onto the point of the hook here and then when you get just about to the bend, push the hook point through, run your worm around and he's going to sit on that little little notch on the hook. Then we want to take our worm, measure it up here, see it kind of goes back in the collar here, and push that through. You want them sitting there nice and straight, and you see the hooks sitting on the other side of it. And to make this weedless, what we do is we push this worm up and just pull the plastic back a little bit and sink the tip of the, the point of the hook right back into the worm. And there you have it. That's a, a basic Texas rig. And this is a really, really good rig for fishing areas like this. You can throw it around weeds and cover, and it's not going to get hung up on you. Another rig you can use, it's called a wacky rig. And this is a really fun and easy rig, again, to fish. And it'll work with most of your plastic worms as well. So for this rig, we're going to do the same type of knot, but we're going to use a different style hook. The hook we're going to use is a round hook, or octopus hook. Um, if you go to most stores, you'll see hooks specifically labeled wacky worm hooks or wacky rig hooks. But what we're looking for is just something with that short shank and a round bend like this. Nice big gap here. And we're going to, again, double the line over. Run it through the eye. Make a loop. Pull it around. And finally, wet it before you pull it tight. Real simple knot, definitely one you're going to want to learn if you're going to get into bass fishing. And we'll just clip this tag end. Now a, a basic wacky rig is pretty simple. What we're going to do is just take this worm and find about the middle of it and just sink your hook right through the middle of it. And you see he's kind of dancing and wiggling on all sides. And uh, this is a simple way to do it, but you'll find some of these worms can get uh, a little pricey sometimes, and they're, they're really soft, and if you catch one or two fish on them, a lot of times they'll break apart. So a better way to do it 
is to get a wacky worm rig tool that looks something like this and it's got all these little o-rings on it here and what we're going to do is slide our worm into this tool and then take this o-ring slide it up over the worm now you don't need the tool but it makes getting these things on much much easier so again, you want to kind of put that O-ring right around the middle of the worm. There's even a few worms on the market that already have these uh, molded right into them. But uh, this is going to be work for most other worms. And then with this, we're just going to take the hook and slide it right under that O-ring. And you get the same type of action, but it's going to make your worms last a lot longer and be a lot more cost effective for you um, in the long run. Again, these two rigs we just rigged up, they're weightless, but you can also add weights if you want. Weights come in all kinds of sizes and shapes and colors. Uh, these bullet weights are the most popular. This particular one's tungsten, but they also come in lead. And basically, if you're in real deep water, um, you're going to need heavier weights. If you're in real shallow water, you can use smaller weights. And you know, a lot of what we're talking about today are kind of generalizations. You, know, you can use these tips in a number of different ways, but you can modify these rigs however you want to, to meet your needs as well. So we're going to be fishing with artificials today, but you can fish with live bait, and uh, bass really like eating a bunch of different baits. Uh, live shiners in particular work really well for them. And you can also catch them on night crawlers, and rigging for them is pretty simple. What you're going to do, again, just take a, a normal hook on the end here, um, something size 2, size 4 tends to be pretty good. If you want to fish with great big shiners, you might need a bigger hook as well, uh, something up to you know, one odd or so should work for you. And uh, we'll put a split shot a couple inches up here, and then a couple feet up, we'll just attach a bobber like this. I tend to prefer bobbers like this that have a little weight on the bottom of them, and uh, that's just going to give you a little bit of extra casting distance. Real simple setup. And what's nice with this, too, is if the bass aren't biting, you can put a smaller hook on, and you can catch bluegills as well. So that's everything you need to get started in bass fishing. So now that you have all the gear, let's go out and catch a few fish. So we're fishing from shore today, and when we come down to the lake, there's a few things we want to look for um, that are going to be places that we can find bass. Uh, one of the first things I do when I approach a shoreline is make a cast that's parallel to the shore. Uh, a lot of times, especially on real bright sunny days like today, those bass will be tucked up real close to the shore. They're using the vegetation on the shoreline or the rocks on the shoreline, uh, that shade that it provides as cover from predators up above. A lot of times they're really, really tight to the bank. And if you walk up on them and just cast out in the middle of the lake, you're actually gonna spook those fish away. So what we're gonna do is make that cast first, and then we're gonna work our way out into the deeper water. Other spots we're gonna look for today are gonna be like little patches of rocks or weed beds, um, anywhere that the bass can sit. Bass are generally ambush predators. Uh, they're not too often going to be roaming around in open water. Instead, they're going to sit next to a log or a weed bed and they're going to wait for food to come to them. I'm fishing with a whopper plopper today. It's a top water bait that you cast out and you just reel it in nice and slow. It makes a cool blop blop sound, which attracts the, the bass, and they really like this bait. We're fishing with this uh, Texas rigged Senko. This is a four inch Senko. And before we cast, we're going to make sure that hook's embedded in there, make sure it's weedless. And all we're going to do with this is find some fishy looking spots. Uh, here we have a little bit of patchy weeds in here. And we're just going to flip this out to the weeds, try to stay right on the edge of them, and just let it fall on a semi slack line. And uh, most of the time, the bass are going to hit that on the fall. They're, they're sitting there by that weed. And when it's falling in front of them, it's just an easy meal they can't pass up. And as we're working that back to us, I just twitch it a little and let it fall again. And uh, like I said, a lot of times we'll hit it on that, that first initial fall. So if you're not getting any bites, just reel it in and throw it back out there again. I hope you enjoyed our introduction to bass fishing. And for more information on bass fishing, visit fishingboat.com. And as always, have, have a, a great, great day, day fishing. fishing. On the wacky rig. That's a nice one there.